people what's good what's good how's everyone doing hopefully you guys are all doing well don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you guys are new to the channel don't forget as well to like and share the vids all right let's see what there is to talk about from the world of boxing today let's start with this one javante davis not sleeping on hector lewis garcia ready to go through everybody at 135 pounds okay um it's been an eventful last couple of weeks i think it's fair to say for javante davis He's fired shots at Devin Haney. He's fired shots at Shakur Stevenson. Um, we obviously heard that him and Ryan Garcia are set to go next year at uh, sometime in the summer. And now um, it's been confirmed that he's left uh, Mayweather Promotions. Obviously no longer working with Floyd Mayweather, no longer working with Leonard Ellaby. He's going to go at this himself. Um, look, he's grown enough to. Uh, Javante Davis is now 28, which is crazy. I remember Javante Davis sort of being one of those fighters to watch when he was 22, 23. Now he's 28. And you just feel like it's, I wouldn't say it's now or never, but surely this is it now, right? Now it's go time. There's no more holding back. Now we see those big fights, right? Uh, fingers crossed he gets past Luis Garcia in January. Ryan Garcia's got a fight coming up in January as well. He fights in Austin, Texas. And then we see a big fight between those two in the summer. Then you've got Devin Haney. Then you've got Shakur Stevenson. Then whoever else that pops up. But um, yeah, look, I, I'm a I'm a massive fan of Javante Davis. I can't help but feel he's been held back a little bit. Um, you look at what everyone else has done. Everyone else has done work, right? I mean, Shakur Stevenson done his work. Um, he's now up to 135 pounds, and you know he's going to do work in this division. Uh, Devin Haney's become undisputed. Tifima Lopez was undisputed, and I think if you were to ask someone a few years ago, maybe two, three years ago, who is the king of all of these guys, maybe a lot of people would have said Javante Davis. I mean, look, Shakur wasn't in the, in the weight class, so it would have been difficult. But out of the, that four, so it was Ryan, Teofimo, Devon, and Javante. I think a lot of people would have said Javante, and he's probably done the less work out of all of them. If I'm, if I'm honest, I think he's probably done the less work out of all of them. Some of you might say Ryan, but I still think Ryan's win over Luke is a very, very good win. I think, um, look, Javante's got some good wins in there. Pedraz is probably the one that stands out. Some of you might say Leo Santa Cruz, but we need to see more. Javante is such a talent. He's 28 now, though. It's go time. It really is. Um, Hector Luis Garcia is going to be no pushover, but he'll get the job done. And then we'll see how he looks with Ryan Garcia. It's interesting to think of um, Floyd now as a promoter or as Mayweather promotions because there doesn't seem to be much there. Remember, there was a time when there seemed to be quite a lot of talent under that Mayweather promotions banner. Now there isn't much. Is there any? I don't know any standout name that he's got. Maybe... That's that for Mayweather promotions. I mean, look, they'll still get young talent just because it's Floyd, right? Floyd will sign up young talent. But in terms of top tier talent, um, I think that could be that. Unless someone wants to mention a name, I think that could be that. Um, Austin Trout plans to multitask uh, it bare knuckle boxing and boxing. Oh, God. We move on very quickly. Uh, Josh Warrington vows to end Luis Alberto Lopez. Keep fucking doubting me. Um, it's funny because Josh has only had one slip up, right? One slip up and that was against Mauricio Lara, the man that no one seems to want to fight. And I do think people have almost, I don't know, either made too much of that slip up or have just kind of put Josh to the side that he's no longer a top level fighter anymore when he's had one slip up. I mean, Josh has had so many good victories. I mean, those fights against Carl Frampton, Lee Selby were just ridiculous and I guess you've got to give him credit for the Kiko Martinez win as well I mean Kiko is clearly still a very very good fighter um look Luis Alberto Lopez I've been watching a bit of tape on him Pff, fucking hell mate he can go you know he can go I mean this isn't going to be easy I know a lot of you might not know who he is doesn't mean he's not a good fighter any anyone coming out of Mexico in and around that weight class can have some right so um that's going to be an interesting night of boxing I think I said this on yesterday's video but if I didn't so uh, what does Zona doing? Because look, you can't go toe to toe with England playing France in the quarterfinal of the World Cup. Um, so they're starting to show early. The, st the show what normally starts like the before the bell section. So that's the fights they show, I think, on the YouTube channel. That normally starts at like 4.30. That's going to start at 1.30 in the afternoon or 2 o'clock. And then there's going to be boxing from then until I think 6.30. They pause, put on the England match inside the arena wait obviously everyone will be watching England all Leeds fans in there they're going to be happy about that and then um, the final three fights or two fights will happen after the England match so that's what they're going to do look some people like it some people don't but the, you can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with England playing France in a quarterfinal 
You just can't. Nobody. Because boxing fans are football fans. It's, so I, I think, anyway, the majority of football fans are boxing fans. And no one's going to want to watch it. No one's going to want to watch Josh. If No one's watching Josh Warrington of England are playing France in the quarterfinal and it's like the fucking 60th minute and it's nil-nil and it's exciting, it's pulsating. No one's watching it. So I think they've made a good decision. Uh, Canelo Alvarez, very likely to face John Ryder in May, says Eddie Hearn. Um, look, I, I mean, some will be happy, some won't. Um, I, I like the fact John's getting a chance here. Getting a, he's going to get a career high payday. It's funny because there's a lot of talk about the fight happening over here. And I would love to see Canelo in the UK. I think he um, could do a stadium, Canelo. I really do. I think he's got that pulling power. But if you're John Ryder, I bet you he wants to go to Vegas and have that fight in Vegas. Um, I guess that's one of those things that every every fighter growing up, I guess, look, you want money, you want world titles, but you also want that big American fight, your name in the lights, your name on the arenas and the hotels. So if you're John Ryder, you probably don't want it here. You probably want it in America. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not I'm not too upset about it. I'm not too angry about it. Canelo fights the best. I think we all can agree with that. And it's very likely he'll have this one. Um, look, he'll probably beat John Ryder. I don't think that's any anything surprised in saying that. And then he'll have that big, big one in September. And fingers crossed that big one is a big, big one. I would love to see Bivolt 168. I think that would be something really special. You know what? I was debating with someone. Me and someone was having a conversation about Daniel Dubois off, of that back, off the back of that performance against Kevin Lorena on the weekend. Um, some say that he done well to recover from the injury and get the job done. There's obviously been so much controversy with, I think, when Dubois went down three times and the WBA rules about knockdowns, but then the British Boxing Board of Control overruled the WBA, all nonsense. And then there was um, the bell um, was stopped early The fight in the first round. There was eight seconds left on the clock and the bell went and did that save Daniel Dubois? And then was the fight stopped a bit early? Could Kevin Lorena have um, regrouped? So there's so much to talk about. But I guess I guess the bigger question, and this is what someone said, is that Frank Warren needs to pump the brakes on Daniel Dubois um, in terms of the next opponent or opponents. And I was like, pump the brakes? What do you mean? I said, they've pumped the brakes. Like since the Joe Joyce fight, they've pumped the brakes. Do you think that since the Joe Joyce fight, they've somehow gone that way? They've gone that way. It's not even a pump in the brakes. Pump in the brakes would be, okay, let's kind of just stagnate. They've gone that way in terms of level of opponent. They've gone from Joe Joyce down. Uh, and they've gone even from Trevor Bryan down. Like, understand what they're doing is one thing. And look, you've got to sort of look at promoters in, in a different lens. <clears throat> Don't look and hear what they say. Look at what they do. So Frank Warren can come out and say things like, yeah, you know, Danny Dubois is a top 10 or top 15 heavyweight. Okay, cool. Who you, who's he fighting? Kevin Lorena. Well, then you don't really think he's a top 10, top 15 heavyweight because if he was, you'd be fighting a fellow top 10, top 15 heavyweight. There's guys out there that would want to fight on the co-main event of a Tyson Fury fight. So I, I don't know if it's, they need to pump the brakes. I think the brakes have been pumped and they've been pumped for a long, long time. Um, it's just the case now of what they do in 2023 with him. Um, I think Rob Tebbett put out a tweet straight after the fight saying they need to maybe not rush him into fighting anyone that's top tier. And I, I agree with that. Um, I think work needs to be done with Daniel Dubois. <clears throat> Understand that Kevin Lorena is um, is a blown up cruiserweight and a small cruiserweight at that. I think you guys saw that, right? Um, so look, he, he is no test. Trevor Bryan, yes, I know there was a WBA regular heavyweight title on the line, but that's no test. So they are taking it very, very easy with Daniel Dubois. And um, I don't blame them. I don't blame them. Clearly, look, has talent. Clearly, good puncher. This is not a dig at Daniel Dubois. It's clearly got a lot of what you need to become a good heavyweight. Um, but I don't think they're going to rush it with him. I don't even think they're going to rush it in 2023. At the back end of 2023, um, he might fight someone of note. But I don't think his first fight in 2023 is going to be against anyone special. And then if he has a fight in and around August, I don't expect that to be anything. I really don't. So if you have any expectations of him going in there against someone of note, then you need to kind of pause your own expectations. I expect him to fight a Charles Martin-like at the end of the year. That's kind of what I expect him to do. And then they'll then make up their mind whether or not 
they go for it in 2024. I guess the, the problem for Daniel Dubois is that he's got this trinket, this WBA regular title. And I don't know if that needs defending. I don't know if people are going to want to come at that. But I think you need to take it easy with him. Again, take it easy. Um, I do wonder what people's expectations of Dubois were or was prior to the Joe Joyce fight. And maybe that's why people are disappointed upon about what he's doing and the level of fighters he's fighting. If your expectations were he's going to be a world beater, then I understand where you're frustrated with the level of opponent, your Trevor Bryans and your Kevin Larinas. If your expectations were he's going to be a decent fighter, then you should be okay with the matchmaking. My expectations were he's a decent fighter. That, that was it. There was no, he's a killer. I'm, you know, I watch boxing enough to look at him and think he's not a killer. Good fighter, but not a killer. Um, not that he won't be, but for now he isn't. So, um, yeah, I don't know if it's a, if they need to pump the brakes. I think they've already pumped the brakes. I guess that's what I'm trying to, trying to get at in that very long-winded answer. Um, Chris Cyborg uh, looking to impress on Crawford versus Avenisium pay-per-view. Obviously, that's this weekend. I need to do a video on that. I've completely forgot about that. We'll do a video on that and we'll do a video on Josh Warrington as well tomorrow. We'll definitely get those in the can. Completely forgot. Um, what is going on with this? Taylor Catchell rematch pushed back from February the 4th into a date to be determined. So it'll be now, they're saying, uh, late February or March. What is going on? What is going on? Something's happening behind this. Is it injuries? Is it trying to find a date, a venue? What is going on with that? What a joke. Um, crazy, crazy. Um, uh, Lawrence O'Coley, David Light, mandatory title fight ordered by the WBO. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot to discuss when it comes to O'Coley. Like, what's happening? It's one thing, that fight being ordered, but who's putting it on? Is it going to be Sky? Is it going to be Matram and Dezo? What's what's happening with uh, Lawrence O'Coley right now? Um, I did catch up with him when I was in uh, Dubai. We, I didn't really want to ask him about his situation. He seemed to be in very good spirits, though. He didn't seem to be a man that's stressed about what's going on outside the ring. But um, I just want it to be over and done with. I want him to continue fighting. You only get one career, one shot at this. And we've seen fighters in the past um, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with promoters and they're just out of action for so long. Like, how many fighters have gone, sort of had issues with Bob Arum? Like, and you just, you just don't fight, you're on the shelf, you're sitting on the shelf because, you know, there's so much going on in the courts. So hopefully, whatever's going on with Akoli and Eddie Hearn and Sky can be sort, sorted out very, very quickly so we can see Akoli back in the ring. Um, anything else here? Yeah. Um, David Benavides, I wish nothing but the best for Edgar Belanga, but he's not getting any better yet. Belanga's not that guy. Sorry. Sorry to, if you're a Belanga fan. I think Ak is from, like, Ak and Barak. I think Ak is, but I just don't see it. Um, anything else, or is that it? That can't be it. Surely not. Boxing. Maybe, maybe everyone's just focused on football right now. There must be more news from the boxing world. No, that is it, you know, it's a quiet one today. All right, guys, girls, have a good day. Peace and love.